This is Shoshone Falls, a major waterfall on the Snake River in southern Idaho, not too far away from the town of Twin Falls. Uh, this is one of the more iconic landmarks in our region. Um, it's known as the, the Niagara of the West. Uh, it's actually a larger waterfall in terms of its vertical drop than Niagara Falls. It's about 212 feet uh, total drop here. And we're looking at Shoshone Falls uh, early in June. Uh, it's probably what I would call kind of like getting into like medium flow. So as impressive as this may look, it actually can get quite a bit larger in terms of the amount of water going over the falls. Uh, when we really get large periods of runoff and releases, the waterfall actually starts uh, over here on the right side uh, and spans uh, all the way over to where the falls are at, on the left side here. So it actually gets a lot bigger and more impressive, but I chose to come on this day so it's not so loud. If I was here when the falls were really raging, uh, it would be quite loud and maybe difficult to hear. Um, and so I want to actually do a two-part video on Shoshone Falls. I want to use this video to look mainly at the waterfall itself, some of its history, a little bit of the geology here as well, obviously. And then with part two, we're going to look at some of the rocks in the canyon up close. We'll talk about them here. You can see them nicely exposed on the north wall of the canyon. But then when our, with the second part of this video series, we'll, I'll ride my bike back up the road here. And there's some nice exposures along the road coming in where you can see these up close, put your hand on them. So we'll kind of go from there. So um, Shoshone Falls is part of the Snake River. The Snake River begins at the south end of Yellowstone National Park. It flows along the eastern base of the Grand Tetons in Wyoming. Uh, and then it turns west, cuts through a pretty impressive canyon. And then it enters Idaho and goes into the Snake River Plain. And it meanders through the Snake River Plain. Uh, it's been pushed around by volcanoes. So the current path of the Snake River is largely predicated by the eruptions of these shield volcanoes over the last four or five million years or so. So every time a volcano erupts, it pours lava into uh, the Snake River Canyon. The lava goes downhill, and if there's enough lava, it can dam up the canyon, disrupt the river, and cause the river to flow somewhere else. So as, as amazing as this landscape is, and we have a, a, about a 500 foot deep canyon here, this is just sort of the the last iteration of where the Snake River has flowed in the Snake River Plain. Uh, I have another video uh, near Pillar Falls that kind of looks at some of the ancient channel deposits of the Snake River and some of the lavas filling it. Um, so the Snake River has a cool story with the origin of the name and the story goes that the early explorers that came here and were communicating with the Native Americans um, they're trying to communicate about this big river, this big canyon and this big river. And so they're not speaking the same language. They're, uh, so they're resorting to hand gestures for the most part. And as they're talking about this river, uh, the, this, the hand gesture the natives are using is something kind of like this, you know, this kind of back and forth sideways motion. That was interpreted by those early explorers to represent snakes. So they called it the Snake River. But actually what they were referring to with that hand motion was the salmon. So the salmon would migrate all the way upstream along the Snake River up to this point. Shoshone Falls was the furthest eastward or upstream point that the salmon could move uh, from the ocean in the Snake River system. So this was a barrier to upstream travel for those migrating salmon. Kind of a cool part of that story. Uh, let's go over here and look at some of the layers in the canyon though. So we've got this massive layer along the bottom edge of the canyon that forms the waterfall. And as we kind of move around to the north end here, we can see kind of by the, the power plant here that it makes up this lower, maybe third or so of the canyon. This is all rhyolite. This, is, this rock is about 8 million years old or so. And this rock formed when this region of Idaho sat right above the Yellowstone hotspot. So the exact same magma plume that's underneath Yellowstone uh, was underneath the Twin Falls region about 8 to 10 million years ago and it erupted sometimes explosively and we have ash deposits nearby that uh, bear record of that. At other times, uh, maybe after a big eruption, that thick sticky pasty lava, think of it like toothpaste in terms of its consistency, would just sort of well up out of the ground 
and ooze outwards <coughs> and form these rhyolitic lava flows. So this is the, the top layer we see related to that Yellowstone hotspot underneath the Twin Falls region. Luckily, there's been enough erosion by the Snake River that it's intersected this layer and exposed it. If you look along the top of that layer, you can see it's kind of irregular, kind of like, it's kind of low over here by the power plant, uh, and then it comes up a little bit higher. Um, and so it's irregular. That's the old topographic surface uh, above the rhyolite after we moved off the hotspot and the rhyolite phase of volcanic activity ended. Then this middle layer right here, the kind of lighter colored layer, you might even from a distance to be able to see it, it kind of has chunks in it. And if you can't see that, I'll show that in the next video when we're closer on the road. That's a layer of breccia. So that's got big, up to some cases, you know, a meter size class of the rhyolite. It's totally made out of big chunks of the rhyolite. And it represents either an erosional phase of uh, probably an erosional phase of the rhyolite breaking up into pieces. Some have interpreted it as an auto breccia associated with the rhyolitic lava flow. Um, I think it's a separate unit. I think there's enough erosion along the bottom that it, and it, it doesn't look to me like a, a, a rhyolite uh, auto breccia. So we've got this uh, erosional layer of the breakup of the rhyolite lava flow right here in the middle, and then a really sharp pronounced line uh, that you can kind of see right about here. And then above that is basalt. So then we get into these more fluid lava eruptions from the nearby shield volcanoes. These are as old as maybe like three to two million years. Uh, and then some of the high ones there down river on the rim, I believe those are about 95,000 years old. And then of course, if you get to the, the craters of the moon area, they become even younger. And so a nice record here with three chapters to the story, the rhyolite eruption, when this area was over the Yellowstone hotspot about six to eight million years ago, a period of erosion when uh, the rhyolite was being eroded, broken up into pieces, uh, maybe collapse of the, maybe if there were calderas here, the caldera walls to form the breccia layer. And then the upper layer there forming the basalt, a different phase of volcanic activity, more fluid types of eruptions, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, and so pretty cool, the, the geology here, uh, at Shoshone Falls. The rhyolite's really resistant. It has a lot of quartz in it. That's why it forms this abrupt drop and this waterfall here. Of course, like a lot of waterfalls, this is actively being eroded back or upstream as the water moves over the top of the cliff face there. Uh, the sediment in the water chips away at it and erodes it backwards. And I guess the last thing I'll mention on the Snake River is even though this is a, a pretty impressive site here, even when it's uh, flowing at a much higher rate, uh, I think it's important to recognize that the Snake River, like a lot of rivers in the West, are kind of like just a, a shell of what they used to be. The Snake River, even though it's pretty impressive here at Shoshone Falls, this river is, there's a heavy demand put on this river. It's diverted into canal systems for agriculture uh, and irrigating the area, industry. Uh, the water is diverted to a power plant down here at the bottom, so it's generating electricity. And so if we were here, you know, over a hundred years ago, before the development of this area, right now, early June, man, this whole thing would just be raging. You probably couldn't be able to hear me. Uh, and it would just be quite impressive. And so just an important historical point to recognize that Shoshone Falls, even in its, you know, spring, early summer splendor, uh, is just sort of a, a shell of its former self. And uh, although some wet years, we do get a glimpse of what it might have looked like during those high water years. So. Uh, so this is part one. I'll go get on my bike and post another video to show you these rocks up close along the road uh, just to the east of here uh, at Shoshone Falls in south central Idaho.